I would be remiss in my responsibilities if I didn't introduce uh, Frank Santos and Daniel Wilson from our training department. Uh, Frank's our director of training, and he'll be monitoring the uh, chat window in the Q&A window. Uh, so as we go through this, uh, type in any questions as we come along. Uh, Frank will answer them in the uh, Q&A window, uh, and then we will uh, We'll review them all at the end of it. And uh, depending on how this goes, uh, if we have some time at the end, I'm also going to give you a five, 10 minute uh, overview of our Pulse Audio, our Audio Solutions brand. But with that, let's jump into why we're here, Beale Street Audio. So a little bit before that, let's talk about Vanco. These guys are Vanco customers. Uh, very honored to be a, a Vanco employee. Uh, quick background on us. We've been around since 1957, so we're a very old company. Uh, the company originally started out uh, as a uh, reseller of mobile, CV accessories, uh, electronics, parts, things like that. Uh, the original company literally drove around Chicago market in a van, hence the name Van Company or Van Co. Uh, obviously, today we have... Uh, uh, drastically evolved from that. Our current leadership uh, acquired the company maybe 20 odd years ago, uh, saw what was happening in the HDMI world, the digital video world, uh, and then took the company in that direction. And then as of uh, about three years ago, branched off into the audio business and recently acquired Beale Street, which I am very happy to uh, be leading for them. Uh, we are out of Chicago. That is our world headquarters, our distribution center, our offices. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our growth has been so good, we recently expanded that office. So let's go on. Um, every company's got a secret sauce. This is ours. Uh, one thing uh, with Vanco, every single product we manufacture with a power cord and all of our Beale Street speakers are 100% QC twice. Once in our partner factories in Asia, and again in our facilities in uh, Batavia, Illinois. Uh, Frank Santos leads this team as well. You can see this is this is our cage. This is our test area. Uh, you see a variety of monitors. We have projectors in there. We have networking gear. We have every major brand of uh, television out there. Uh, including WBOX, uh, ADI, and you guys are, are a big piece of our business. So having our products work well with the WBOX products uh, is important to us. So we have many WBOX TVs here. Uh, again, 100% QC, everything we sell that's active. Reason we do that is we don't want to be the reason you guys have to roll a truck. If it's going to break, we want to know that it broke in Chicago, not before it went to ADI, not before it went to you, not before it went to your customer. Nobody else does this. Uh, it's, it's very, very important for us, very important for you. The other thing is our brand partnership. Uh, we have uh, partnerships with people like JVC, Yamaha, Vivitec, TrendNet, and Luxel. What does that mean? That means that our engineers, our tech people are, are in contact with theirs. We have their products. They have our products. We can replicate problems in our facilities. If you're having a problem with our Evo IP, our HDMI over IP product, and you're connecting, connecting it to a TreadNet or Luxel switch, well, you know what? Frank's team can grab a TreadNet or Luxel switch and replicate your installation to determine your problems. Uh, those are what our brand partners are. So. Uh, of course, getting a hold of us, you know, we've won lots of awards recently. We uh, won a, a gold medal uh, for CE Pro Magazine for our tech support. Uh, again, this is a team that Frank leads. Uh, you want to get a hold of us by phone? Call us. You're an email guy? Email us. Uh, you want to do web chat? We have a web chat function on our uh, phone, on our website. I'm sorry. So long story short, you want to get a hold of us? We are here for you. Uh, it's all about the support, and uh, that carries through through Beale Street. So, uh, again, one last piece about Vanco. Again, if you don't know us, you should. We have 5,000-odd products in our mix. Uh, you name it, we build it. We want you to think of us first. If I got a question, hey, I need something that does this. Call our tech team. Chances are we build it. 
So why are we here? Let's talk about Beale Street, one of my favorite subjects. Uh, our tagline, of course, is yes, we did reinvent the loudspeaker. Uh, so big question, right? Does the world really need another loudspeaker? Uh, certainly not if it's the same as every other loudspeaker. Uh, the world needs another loudspeaker when it's different, when it has a completely different approach to the architectural speaker. And uh, our approach is called Silent Vortex. It's a patented design. Uh, it's based on a ported transmission line design that's been around since the 30s. Uh, and the real focus is giving you deep bass and a robust sound. Before we jump into uh, Sonic Vortex in depth in our product line, let's talk about the problem today. So you guys have all seen this, right? This is a typical architectural loudspeaker. So what happens with an architectural loudspeaker? Well, sound comes off the front of the speaker just like it's supposed to. But guess what? Sound also resonates off the back of the loudspeaker. What happens to that sound? Well, first of all, it's going to affect the performance of the sound coming off the front because a speaker isn't a speaker, it's a speaker in an enclosure, always. Uh, the other challenge is it resonates into other rooms, uh, it vibrates walls, at best it creates a very inconsistent sound and a very differing performances out of the same speaker. Let's look at that a little bit. So again, I mentioned earlier, right? A speaker is a speaker, it's a speaker in an enclosure. Uh, companies, great companies spend millions of dollars designing enclosures, cabinets for their speakers uh, because the speaker affects the performances of the, the, I'm sorry, the enclosure affects the performance of the speaker. Now, when I take an infinite baffle design, which is what we're talking about, and I put it in the ceiling, now, if it's a small ceiling, uh, it's going to restrict the bass response of that speaker, so I'm not going to get great bass. If it's too big of an enclosure, it's actually going to cause the bass to be tubby and muddy. Um, that also, the pressures on the back of the cam will, uh, back of the speaker can also change the dispersion characteristics of the loudspeaker. So again, we really don't know what this speaker is going to sound like. And as a speaker designer, we've got to kind of play with that. So we, we maybe don't build the best crossover. We don't use the perfect components because we have to allow for variations in the enclosure. Another huge, huge problem is sound radiating into adjoining spaces. Um, you know, the, the, the sound couples to the floor of the room above and it resonates through that floor. It couples to the wall. If you've got blown insulation, it can, uh, it can move that insulation. The insulation can then land on the back of the speaker, could mess up the crossover, could have cause the speaker to overheat. Again, a tremendous amount of problems with this design. So let's talk about Going back to our, our base conversation, let's talk about how do we make base? Well, base is pretty simple. You want to make base, you move air. Um, you want to tune your cabinet. So, so think bigger cabinet, again, uh, very high level. Bigger cabinet, more base. Longer port, more base. Uh, think of a church pipe organ, right? You go to church pipe organ, the little pipes are for the high frequencies, the longer pipes are for the low frequencies. We're moving air, we're moving more air. Uh, one of the challenges of a typical uh, cabinet enclosure like this is you can create a tremendous amount of port turbulence or port noise. Uh, you probably heard it, didn't even realize it. It makes a howling sound. That's, uh, that's what happens if I use a basic uh, port on my cabinet. So we know we're not going to put a speaker like this in a wall. We're not going to put a huge speaker in a room. So what happens if I want to put a small speaker in? I want to put an you know, a architectural speaker into a ceiling. Well, I could do this. I could have a really, really long port, have it stick out, but I'm relatively certain your customers aren't going to go for that. So you really can't do that. But that's what we have to do to generate good, nice, deep bass. So now we're going to talk about Sonic Vortex. So again, Sonic Vortex is our patent. It's uh, a ported transmission line design, again, developed back in the 30s, so an 80-year-old design. Um, and it's the best way 
to move air in small enclosures. If you've ever sold a tower loudspeaker from virtually any brand, any of the great brands out there, chances are you sold a transmission line loudspeaker. What we did is we took that transmission line design and we put it in again in our, seat, our speaker by taking the back wave off of the woofer, that in an infinite baffle design is rattling the other spaces, is affecting the base. We fire it down to the back of the cabinet. We let it hit a waveguide, split it into six ports, six tubes. And I'm gonna show you this in a second. And then we bring that back out the front of the loudspeaker. Remember I told you the longer the port, the deeper the frequency response? Well, on our six inch speaker, we have the equivalent of a four foot long port. So uh, again, nice try to hang a four foot long port from the ceiling. With our speakers, you can do it. Uh, another side benefit is very, very wide dispersion, 160 degree dispersion, full frequency response. For you commercial guys, that means less speakers to cover an area. Uh, in residential large rooms, we can use less speakers. So this is what Sonic Vortex looks like. Uh, this is a speaker actually broken apart. Uh, again, what we do is we take that back wave off of the woofer, we fire it down, it hits our waveguide, the waveguide splits it into six different pieces, then we coil it back out the front. Now, on the front of the speaker, we have six ports. Now, those ports are fluted. Um, they're designed so that we increase the air velocity, increase the energy, bring that energy back out the front. So there's virtually no cabinet resonances with this speaker. Um, and there's no howling because of the way we flute the, the, uh, the ports on the front. Um, again, the big thing is I don't care what the enclosure looks like. I don't care what the ceiling looks like. I don't care if it's big. I don't care if it's small. We give you the same response because we bring the cabinet, we bring the technology with us. Now, someone says, well, why don't I just take an infinite baffle design and stick a box on the back? And you could certainly do that. But as soon as I do that, I absolutely crush the base response. Remember, base needs air. So we need to move air to generate low base. So if I put a box on the back of an infinite baffle design, I'll protect it from the ceiling. I'll, I'll reduce the radiation uh, into the other spaces, but I will kill any opportunity for low base out of that loudspeaker. The Sonic Vortex design brings all that sound into the room and it actually increases the base response doesn't just transfer it. So it brings the energy up. So what we give you is a speaker that plays deeper, is more efficient than virtually any other speaker in its class. And because I know exactly what my speaker's gonna do, remember earlier I talked about how, um, you know, we gotta play with the crossover within the design. But with me, because I know exactly what the frequency response of my cabinet is, I can build a better crossover, I can use better components, I can give you a much better sound. So what are our big takeaways, guys, right? We create great deep bass in a very small enclosure. Um, we always have a consistent sound and we don't transfer that sound to other adjacent spaces. You don't hear it in the baby's room because the baby room is right above your great room with your home theater system in it. We handle all that energy, we bring it all forward. So that's Sonic Vortex. That's a great thing about it is that was the long presentation. We've got a uh, video on our website, it's three minutes long. You learn that three minute video. You can explain this technology to any one of your customers uh, and absolutely be able to step them into this technology and generate more revenue for you and your businesses. So let's break down the line now, guys. Um, so we do a good, better, best or as we like to say, better, more better, better than their best. So let's look at each one of these now. So our better speaker, our entry level, polypropylene woofers, silk dome tweeters. We do them in a six and a half inch and an eight inch speaker. Uh, we do them in angled and straight. Uh, and we also do them in our dual voice coil speaker. And uh, I'm gonna show you that product at, towards the end because it's a, Again, unique product. Everything we do, we talk Beal. We want to do it better. We want to take 
the convention of other people and do a better version of it. And we'll show you that and some other products coming up. Uh, excuse me one second while I take a drink. All right, our next step, more better. So we go from the polywoofer to a fluted polywoofer. Stiffen up the woofer a little bit, uh, tighten up the base, uh, give us a little tighter, deeper base. Uh, and then we go to the aluminum tweeter. So again, a little bit cleaner, high frequencies. Um, this we do in our four inch, our small speakers, uh, our six and a half and our eights. Uh, we also do these in our in walls, our in wall four inch, our, what we call our pancake series. So we do make a series of uh, shallow depth speakers because our typical six inch speaker is about uh, six, seven inches deep. Uh, but sometimes you get into an enclosure where I just don't have the space. I still don't want to put in an infinite baffle. Uh, so we do make what we call our pancake series, which are again our shallow depth product, all, all viewable on our website or catalogs on the website too. Um, but we do these in our home theater product and we do these in our straight and angled and our best product. Quite honestly, I think an absolute steal in our line. Uh, carbon fiber woofers, titanium tweeters. So the best woofer material, um, the best tweeter material we can use. Again, we do these in the four inch, six and a half and eight inch. We do these in our pancakes and our LCRs. We do these in our straight and our angled. So remember I mentioned pancake, right? So you uh, need to put a speaker in a wall. I open up a ceiling and crap, there's a pipe there. There's duct work there. What do I do? Yeah, you put an infinite baffle speaker in and it couples to duct work and you're going to magnify the problem of sound transmission. With these guys, uh, you actually are going to give them the sonic vortex performance. Obviously not as much bass because it's a smaller vortex. Uh, but I can now in shallow, uh, shallow applications, shallow depth applications, give them sonic vortex performance. And these guys here, we actually give you round grills and square grills. So you can put them in a wall and put the square grill on there and give them a nice clean look. Our home theater speakers, very, very popular. Uh, amazing sound quality, I love these guys. So less than three inches deep to fit into a standard stud wall. Dual sonic vortex is again, the, we're using the same four inch driver. We do these in the MB and the BB, so the aluminum tweeter and the titanium tweeter, the fluted poly and the Kevlar woofers. Uh, I'm sorry, carbon fiber woofers. Then our newest speaker, so we took that same design and now we reconfigured the baffle, reconfigured the design. The previous speaker was 22 inches tall, give or take. Guess what? Can't go on a stud sideways, right? This guy's 14 and a half inches tall. So we pull the woofers together. Uh, now we have a speaker that has got a much smaller footprint, uh, can go horizontal between studs. It'll fit between studs now. And it also looks really good as an effect channel speaker because of its smaller footprint. Love this guy again. This is the newest speaker in our line. Uh, again, BB and uh, MB series product. Uh, remember I mentioned our dual voice call. All right, you guys have been in the business, right? You've sold dual tweeter speakers. Check out our dual tweeter speaker. Very unique in the industry. We've developed the only, I think maybe one other guy has one now, dual voice coil tweeter, dual voice coil woofer in the market. Why is this important? Well, if I do a dual tweeter speaker, what happens when I put two tweeters side by side or any two radiating surfaces side by side, they cancel. So, um, and, and one plane, I'm going to get a nice dispersion pattern. In the other plane, I'm going to get cancellation. So the dispersion pattern from a dual tweeter speaker or any line array speaker, that's a line array. Any line array speaker, the dispersion pattern is actually going to be elliptical or cylindrical. Um, but your woofer, of course, gives you a nice spherical dispersion pattern. So your challenge is that the speaker will not sound the same on the side as it does on the top, let's say. Um, there's going to be differences in performance from one angle to another. Well, what we did is again said that's ah, not the right way to do it. So we tasked our engineers with developing a dual voice coil tweeter. Why can't other guys do it? Because they can't design a tweeter that can take the power of the left and right channel. We did. So now we have dual voice coil tweeter, dual voice coil woofer. 
what we give you, spherical dispersion patterns at all frequencies. Again, everything we do, we just try to do it a little better. If you guys are doing dual voice coil tweeters, dual voice coil speakers and bathrooms, hallways, things like that, this is the guy you want to use because, again, full, full dispersion, 160 degrees at full frequency. All right. So, again, that was our speaker line in a nutshell. Again, we encourage you to visit the website. But let's look at our woofer sound. This is Sonic Vortex. Take it to the limit. So how do we do the most with Sonic Vortex? If you guys, I don't know if there's any installers that have used these, but I've never met a guy that didn't absolutely love these. So in-sealing subwoofers, if you guys have ever installed an in-sealing subwoofer, that's an infinite baffle. You've certainly had a customer complain at some point. The problems with sound transmissions into other spaces, into adjoining spaces, is magnified when I do an in-sealing subwoofer. Well, in our case, we take that Sonic Vortex technology and we take it to its limits. Six inch, eight inch, six and a half and eight inch. Uh, here we're using a Kevlar driver because it's super, super stiff, uh, but very lightweight at the same time. Uh, questions we always get is, oh man, that thing is huge. Is it going to crack my drywall? We have sold thousands of these and I have never, ever had an integrator call back and say that our speaker cracked drywall. Again, because we're taking all of that resonance and we're not allowing it to spread out through the sides. We're not letting it come off the back. We're grabbing it, we're harnessing it, we're bringing it back out to the front of the loudspeaker. So we have no resonances that are being transmitted into the drywall. Killer app for Sonic Vortex. Well, if you got subs, you need subwoofer amplifiers. Uh, I'm not going to go into these too much, but 120 watt, 220 watt, line level in, speaker level in, phase control, auto signal sensing, everything you need in the high power, high current subwoofer amplifiers. Um, probably one of our, our, our biggest requests over the past six months is I love it. Can you build, do you have it in a box? Well, starting hopefully, knock on wood, in June, because we would have shipped by now if it, the whole world had kind of fallen in on us. Um, we will be shipping in-room subwoofers. So using our 220 watt high current class D amplifier, using our six and a half and our eight inch uh, sonic vortex subwoofers in an enclosure, nice black, small footprint, great deep bass response, uh, again, because it's a Beale Street in a, in, a, in a Vanco product, we're actually going to be assembling these in Chicago. We're going to be 100% QCing these in Chicago uh, before we ever ship them to the distributors and ultimately out to the dealers. So look for these guys in May. Great price point, small footprint, uh, on all the value of a Sonic Vortex subwoofer. All right, a couple amplifiers we have. So uh, this is our, D, our D2.1. This is our original amplifier. Uh, still goes very well. Uh, we also have a product called DB Taylor. I'm going to tell you, just buy them as a package. So this is a 50-watt Class D stereo amplifier. Uh, the nice thing about the amplifier is it's got digital inputs. It's got analog inputs. Uh, when you add the DB Taylor, you also have Bluetooth input. You bring the IR control from the back to the front. You also allow the amplifier to be controlled by anybody's remote control. And what's amazing is the app. When you add these two together, you download the DBT Taylor app and you can make this amplifier stand on its head. It's got EQ controls, it's got power controls, it's got slope and phase for the subwoofer you can absolutely dial this amplifier into your customer's installation when you package these two together and it gives you Bluetooth uh, 4.0 by adding the DBT Taylor. DBT Taylor connects with uh, RJ45, CAT6, pre-terminated CAT6 cable. Uh, you, know, you can get them off the shelf at ADI. Uh, great, great little amplifier, wall mountable, put it by in the cabinet program the customer's remote control into it, uh, set up the app, and you give them an amazing sound, and you make the whole thing disappear.
our two newest amplifiers, the uh, BA251 uh, and BA2101. So they have the similar feature to the uh, 2.1 where I can use anybody's remote controls to control these amplifiers. I can program them in. Same thing, digital inputs, uh, analog inputs, subwoofer outputs, uh, signal sensing. Uh, these things are also now bridgeable. So if we need even more high power, uh, I can bridge these guys. So new, newer form factor, half rack size, uh, these are our two newest amplifiers, amazing sound quality, tons of current, drives our speakers really, really well. That's it for the Rensi side. I mean, we are cooking here. So let's go on and talk about some commercial products. We have a great line of commercial products. So 70 volt speakers. Uh, we have four 70 volt speakers in our line. When you see these with some of our accessory products, these will cover, you know, say 80%. 90% of the commercial jobs out there. Um, we're using the same Sonic Vortex design. Uh, we're using aluminum and poly on these. Uh, the great thing about these products is they're 70 volt, they're 100 volt for our European friends, and they're 25 volt for those of you that are doing education. You guys are in the education market, uh, older schools, um, they're using 25 volt systems instead of 70 volt systems. A lot of guys aren't building 25 volt speakers anymore. We still have 25 volt speakers. Uh, we do again four inch, six and a half, and an eight inch, and then a pancake, our shallow depth four inch as well. For uh, again, you commercial guys out there, if you're using e software to do your room modeling, to do your system designs, uh, all of the Beal products are available. Uh, with uh, in the East program, um, if you have customers that are asking you for polar dispersion patterns, frequency response patterns, uh, again, which are usually requested in the commercial line, we have those available. You can download them on our website. I put a couple examples here. So let's talk about amplifiers. These guys are brand new, absolutely amazing, uh, have taken off in the industry. So we've developed two uh, multi-channel amplifiers. Yeah, we could say they're commercial, but you can also very easily use these for residential applications. I'm going to show you how. So we have a four channel by 250 watt per channel, and we have a uh, two channel by 500 watt per channel. High power, high current, class D amplifiers. What's nice about these guys is that any channel can either be a 70 volt channel, 170 or 100 volt, uh, or an 8 ohm channel, and you could do them simultaneously. I could have one channel be 8 ohm, one channel be 70 volt, and do it at the same time. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, these are network amplifiers. You put these guys on your network, you type in the IP address, and you really open up what these things can do. And I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to show you all the things that we can do with these two amplifiers. So this is Again, type in the IP address. This is the first screen. So on this screen, this is the call the home screen, if you like. We have the matrix mode. I can send any input to any output. So it's a four by four, two by two. So I can send any input to any output. I got slider controls by channel. And it gives me a readout of the output and input of that channel. So it sends, tells me how much the signal's coming in, how much signal's going out. A couple other features. Uh, these are multi-channel amps, so they can run, they can tend to run hot. We have a, a readout that gives you, and actually we did a software update to these. So now the temperature reading is in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. Sorry for our Canadian friends. Um, and the fan is uh, activated by the temperature. So if the amp is running hard, the fan's gonna increase. But if the amp isn't, we don't wanna have a lot of amp, a lot of fan noise, right? So we can lower the, the amplifier, will lower the fan noise to keep it running at its optimal temperature and not creating any excessive noise. So the next page is, is our DSP page. So here, We've got high-pass filters, 
So if I want to roll the bass out of uh, certain channels, because I'm using smaller speakers or I'm adding a subwoofer in there, I can do that. Uh, I have bass and treble control by channel. And actually, we can do this 20 different times and set up different, different settings based on, you know, the nighttime at a club, daytime at a club or a restaurant, things like that. But anyways, so now you set this all up for the customer. You set up everything they need. And then also here, you have a uh, limiter. So if that particular channel is being overdriven, the limiter will kick in and will drop that channel down without affecting the other channels. So we're not going to let you overdrive the amplifier. We're not going to let the customer damage the amplifier. We're going to have an active limiter built in. Um, parametric equalizer. Again, you guys have been in the commercial space. You know how expensive a parametric equalizer is. So what we've done is we've added a three-band parametric equalizer by channel. So on our four-channel amp, we have four three-band parametric equalizers. Now I can get in and I can really tweak that zone. I can really tweak that area. So let's say I did an install in a restaurant and uh, they got this glasses hanging over the bar, right? And, oh, man, this new music, this new, new, my new Beale speakers are rattling those glasses. Well, you can figure out the resonant frequency of those glasses. You can actually put a notch filter in. You can adjust the slope of the notch filter to keep those glasses from rattling. Too much bass over by the window. The windows are magnifying the bass. I can roll the bass off. I can tailor each zone. Uh, right down to whatever I need it to be by having a parametric equalizer by zone built in. Oh, yeah, I always forget these uh, red pop-ups. Thanks, Frank. So we got all of that, and now I can store it in my computer, my, my, uh, in the in this amplifier, sorry, I can st I can store it into a computer. I can actually store up to 20 different settings. So again, I can have a weekend setting in a restaurant. I can have a daytime. I can have a lunch setting. I can have a different dinner setting. Uh, you know, maybe I have a setting because we have a band that plays at night and we want to pump their sound into our system. So I have, I have all of those settings and I can store them. I can also store them in a computer. Now, why is this awesome? So, congratulations, you just scored six Chick-fil-A's. Well, we know every Chick-fil-A it looks like every other Chick-fil-A. So, you set up the first one, you do some nice field speakers, put in one of our amplifiers, get everything set up and done, program it, store it in your computer. Now, the guy says, hey, I'm ready for my next restaurant. Great, you take the program, dump it into the amplifier, send it out with your installers to the job site. Now you're cutting the installation time down because you already set up the amplifier before it went to the job site. Or, heaven forbid, one of our amplifiers craps out. It could happen. Well, instead of going out to the job site, first you call us and we'll, we'll determine that it's dead. Um, so instead of going out, getting the amplifier, taking it back, programming a new one, sending it out there. You go run over to ADI, you get another amplifier, you dump the program into it, you go out to the job site, you swap the amplifiers out, now you're rolling a truck once instead of two or three times, and you don't have a temporary fix in the customer's uh, instant because you put the program into the new amplifier. Uh, again, we talked about the fact that we have different output configurations. So I can set up 70 volt, 100 volt, or 8 ohm. Uh, now here's the application for this. Uh, you got those landscape speakers, Rust Sound and Niles, both very good ADI customer or ADI vendors. They make the landscape type speakers. Well, the speakers themselves are 70 volt, but their subwoofers are 8 ohm. How about instead of having to use two amplifiers, you use uh, our 200, our two, uh, 2500, and you dedicate one channel to 70 volt, 500 watts out to all the landscape speakers. You dedicate another channel. The other channel is an 8 ohm. You drive the subwoofer. You put in the uh, high pass. You just boost the bass on it. 
And now I've got one amplifier that's doing everything. And again, you can do these by, by zone or by channel. Well, you know, some restaurants are open 24 hours, others are not. How about we put a power saving in where the amplifier will auto on, auto off, or just stay on all the time. Uh, for you network guys, you know, we have it set up as a static IP. If you want to do a dynamic IP, you set this up the way you want to do it. And then, of course, you got to have a password. So here's where you enter your password. Now, all of this stuff you, you do, but you can, you can give the customer access to this if you want, or you can just let them have the front panel. Front panel gives them access to matrix mode and zone volume, and that's about it. There's some other things they can do there. But if you don't want them to have access to all this stuff, just don't give them access to it. This is for you to dial this amplifier in perfectly for your customer. All right, that's it for amplifiers. That's it for commercial. That's it for residential. A few more things to show you here. I'm just checking my clock. We're doing great. So, um, Beale's a wonderful speaker, right? Not the prettiest thing in the world. We have developed some pendant enclosures for our Beale speakers. These work with our 6-inch and our 8-inch. Um, they come in white or black. If you buy them in black, I'm going to give you the black girls. You don't have to paint it. Obviously, you get a white girl with the speaker, so you don't need another one. Uh, for our friends out in California, we did add a seismic mount. We know that California, some spaces require two mounting points. So uh, we have a we have a, a second mounting point available uh, for those of you with seismic restrictions. But we give you the cable. We give you the hardware. We give you everything you need to install these. Um, we are developing actually a wall mount bracket for those, uh, so that'll be coming down the road. But today, these are amazing. You can paint them; they look great. Uh, and again, works resi product, works commercial product, works all of our speakers, even our foreign speakers fit in fit in these guys. Uh, also, when you uh, add these, it takes them to uh, I believe an IP sixty three rating. Um, but now I can hang these in covered patios, outdoor uh, covered spaces, and I can even expand the applications for sonic vortex with these guys. Hey, we got a volume control. Everybody uses volume controls. So what's different about our volume control? Remember, I've said it over and over. Everything we do, we want to do it better. So uh, you guys have used volume controls in the past transformer based control you know as soon as you put a transformer based control on a system yeah they, they, they change the performance of a loudspeaker they change the performance of the system it's yeah one of the things you say well it's just the way it is and they're like 50 watt controls really but most of the volume controls out there are 50 watt 75 watt control well ours is 105 watt rms with 350 watt peak how we do that is we don't have transformers. We don't have resistors. Everything is done electronically. The only thing on the back of this control is a circuit board. That's it. Everything is done on that board. Um, also, you guys have done impedance matching. We all have done impedance matching controls in our life. Um, what happens with impedance matching control, right? I move dip switches. I got to move jumpers. If I add a speaker, it's supposed to go back and change all the other ones again. Ours does it dynamically. We measure the output impedance, and then we adjust the other end. We adjust the input size of the amplifier is always seeing an 8 ohm load. And impedance is dynamic, right? Impedance isn't constant. That's resistance. So we know when we say 8 ohm impedance, we know it's not really an 8 ohm impedance. It's, it changes. It fluctuates. Uh, with ours, we're going to stabilize an amplifier because we're going to maintain a constant 8 ohm load on that amplifier. We're going to take all the impedance changes from the loudspeakers. If I took, put two pairs or three pairs of speakers on these controls, don't care. The amplifier is going to see a nice, consistent load. It's a different approach. Oh, and I know you guys have knocked out the back of car alarm boxes or had to use trim rings, pre-construction rings, instead of boxes because your control doesn't fit in a box. Guess what, guys? These things fit in a box because there is no transformer. Yep, we got pre-construction brackets, what can I tell you?
we got tile bridges too. Not a lot to be said there. So another line, Beal Basics. All this stuff is great. Um, but we know sometimes people aren't going to spend the money on Sonic Vortex. It is not an entry-level design. It's not intended to be. Um, but what do we do for those customers that say, yeah, I want Sonic Vortex in my living room. I want Sonic Vortex in my great room. But you know what? In my office, in, in, in my garage, I don't want to spend the money. What do you got? Well, instead of having to use another brand, we developed a line that is kind of like everybody else's. Uh, it's an infinite baffle design. But again, let's do it better. Where everybody, and I'm talking, these are entry level price points. Right now on a promo, our six and a half inch eight, our six and a half inch two way is on promo at ADI for $65 a pair of dealer cost. Um, so we're hitting an entry level price point. But even at that entry level price point, we're using Kevlar drivers and titanium tweeters. Nobody's doing that. At this price point, you're lucky if you're getting an aluminum tweeter. We're using titanium. We're not using polypropylene woofers. We're using Kevlar. So even at a infinite baffle design at an entry level price point, we're just doing it a little bit better. Um, same thing, those are available, by the way, commercial and residential, six and a half inch and eight inch. So, you know, with the transformer and without. Uh, also, we have a, a non sonic vortex pendant. Uh, six and a half inch, this is poly and silk. Uh, but again, sometimes the guy's just beating you up on price. Uh, so we have this product. It does come with a wall mount bracket. It is completely weatherproof. Um, it comes with everything you need. You can use it as an 8 ohm speaker. You can use it as a 70-volt speaker. You can use it as a wall mount or a pendant mount speaker. Um, again, here's just kind of a, a cutaway. We do do a, a old school dual tweeter. Again, just kind of hit a price point sometimes. Here's the back of our uh, 70 volt product. We do, again, we're using real transformers. We're using real controls. We're using real crossovers on these things. Um, you know what, before I talk about this, I've got, I'm kind of doing an eh, no, I won't. All right, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about was we have another line of product called Pulse Audio. Um, let me switch here really quick. So Pulse Audio, this is our audio solutions brand. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to whip through this really quick because you guys got to know what it is. So the products in this line are based on your request. You guys coming to us and saying, can you get this? Can you manufacture this? I need this. That's Pulse Audio, really quick. So we make some two channel amps, high current, great sounding, signal sensing. Uh, again, know they're there, 25 watt to 150 watt amplifiers. We have a, a six by six, it's again, very low cost, old school. We know everybody's going to decentralize Sonos or MusicCast type product. Uh, but if you're a Control 4 dealer, this, this is what most Control 4 dealers are using because it's low cost. Our, uh, we work with Control 4. You've got all the information in the Control 4 site, uh, everything you need, the API is all there. Uh, again, very nice, six by six, up to 18 zone, uh, low cost distributed uh, music system. Uh, small commercial amplifier, very, very popular at ADI. Little 40 watt amplifier, um, microphone inputs on this guy, line level inputs, digital inputs, RS-232 control. You can actually gank six, 16 of these on a system, address each one individually to, through 232. Again, great low cost kind of Swiss Army knife amplifier. Uh, our in wall wall plate amplifier. So, little 30 watt, our uh, Bluetooth 5.0, I believe. At the end, Frank, if I, you need to correct me on that, correct me on that. But um, each one is uh, uh, has unique passcodes. So you can put multiples of these in the system. It's a real amplifier on there. It sounds really, really good. Uh, but again, guy needs a low cost uh, audio system. Here's a nice low cost audio system. Uh, our streaming receiver, under $100. Uh, 
Um, you can do up to six of them on the app. They do everything, Tidal, Deezer, iHeartRadio, AirPlay, everything but Pandora. Uh, again, a great low-cost streamer. We do a couple of Bluetooth amplifiers, Bluetooth transmitter receivers, I'm sorry. This guy here, which does analog audio, and then this guy here, which now also adds digital. So I can add Bluetooth to a system that doesn't have Bluetooth. I can pull Bluetooth out of a system and send it to another uh, another system if I need to. Both of these guys are, are battery powered. Again, they're they're on the shelf. Great little great little solutions. When the guy says, "Hey, can you add Bluetooth to my system?" Uh, probably the most popular product we make in, in the Pulse line long distance uh, audio transmitter. So we can go up to 950 feet with digital audio up to 550 feet on analog audio. So now I need to get audio from one side of a church to another, from one side of a factory to another. This guy can do it, it can do it. Analog and digital, you can do. You can use both. I told you I was gonna go fast. Um, you guys, you do a den nice den and receiver or something, and now I wanna run it to a second zone, I wanna run it to a, a a uh, uh, distributed music system. Now, how about instead of giving up 5.1 music and just giving them stereo, how about if we down mix that 5.1? Dolby music sounds wonderful. 5.1 music sounds great. With this guy, I can actually down mix those 5.1 channels into a two channel system and go out to an, uh, a second audio zone. Uh, we're stuck at home, guys. What can I tell you? This is on sale at ADI right now. Uh, super, super discount on this guy. A unique piece. It's a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth speaker with an auxiliary input, eight inch subwoofer in the bottom, tweeters all the way around the top. It's weather resistant. Take it out of your boat, sit in the backyard, enjoy some great sound. Very, very cool product. That's best pulse. I told you I was going to do it quick. So let's go back to this guy. So this is my contact info. I got myself here. We got Frank Santos, our director of training. We got Daniel White, our excellent trainer. Um, you can just pull out your phones, scan our QR codes, and you will have all of our contact info in your phone. Ugh. Um, and, and Randy, we've got a couple questions uh, if you've got time to answer. What's that? We've got a couple questions uh, if I can read them to you. Hang on, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Before we go to Q&A, you guys hang in there. Sean Dixon from ADI would like to say something. So, Mr. Dixon, if your microphone's working, take a couple seconds before we do Q&A. And while we're doing that, you guys go into the Q&A section, type in your questions, and uh, we'll talk about those in a couple of seconds. Thanks, Randy. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Audio's working. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for being on this call today. I see a number of you uh, on the call, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks to uh, Mike Masson for hosting these. I missed the first couple minutes of the call, but uh, if he didn't mention it and, and you don't know, we're, uh, we're hosting daily webinars through at least through the end of next month at this point. It's to be determined if, if it's going to go uh, beyond that, but uh, hopefully uh, you're taking advantage of uh, learning about some of the products that we offer that you may not be familiar with um, throughout this time that you know many of us are uh, are stuck at home or uh, business has just slowed down in general. But um, as Randy mentioned or, or said, my name's Sean Dixon. I'm the director of AV programs here at ADI. Uh, basically, what that means is I'm on the business development team, uh, manage programs. One of them. Uh, you may have heard of that I manage is AV Elite. It's a dealer uh, reward program, uh, rewards you for doing a certain level of business um, with ADI within the AV category with the eligible vendors. And um, if you actually Beale Street and Vanco are both uh, are both participating vendors. So I want to thank those guys uh, for their participation. They've been uh, been in the program for many, many years. Um, very, very supportive of the program, very supportive of ADI, but uh, AV Elite's a program that I uh, would love to get you more information on if you're not already um, in the program. Um, certainly just drop an, uh, an email to avelite at adiglobal.com and uh, either I'll, I'll get back with you or we'll have someone get back with you uh, within your regions. Um, also, just wanted to mention we've got a uh, 
phenomenal uh, RAS team, regional account specialist team out in the field. Um, if you're not familiar with who your person is, um, let us know. We can certainly get you their information. Ask your local branch. Um, shoot any one of us an email. But we've got a phenomenal RAS team as well as a Pro EV team out in the field that's there to help you guys with uh, projects when you need them, um, update you on new product and so forth, offer training, um, as well as a, a phenomenal rep network that Vanco and Beale Street have out there. So uh, we've got uh, some super strong rep firms out there. I know uh, at least one or two of them are on the call right now, uh, but they're there working hard for uh, us, working hard for the vendor and working hard for you guys every day. So uh, certainly tap into them when you need them. And then uh, last but not least for me is hopefully everybody on the call knows about our systems team. We've got a group of guys um, in both the US and Canada that uh, if you need help with any projects um, in any category, um, they're there to help. But we've got an AV uh, and communications uh, group that's there to help you guys with projects uh, AV related when you need them, as well as a technical sales engineer um, that gets kind of stickier with some of your medium to larger size uh, projects out there. So um, take advantage of that team uh, whenever you need it. and. Um, I want to thank everybody again for being on the call on behalf of uh, all of us at ADI and, and I think uh, Banco and Beale Street as well. So, uh, Frank, Randy, I'll turn it back to you and we'll get some of these questions answered. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate Thanks. that. Um, you know, you guys uh, asked me, I mentioned, I just want to reiterate, you know, one of the great things about Banco, why I'm very honored to work with Banco, is they will never, we will never, ever, ever leave you in a little lurch, just like ADI. You need us, you need our tech support. That's why we're here, you know. Uh, we believe in partnership. We believe in our partnership with our distributors like ADI, with you guys. Um, you know, and you know, Sean mentioned AV Elite. I've got a uh, certain affinity for AV Elite. If you guys are doing AV business, you're buying AV from ADI, you need to check it out. Uh, there's some really nice money to be made there for um, AV dealers at ADI. Um, so reach out to Sean or the AV Elite at adiglobal.com and get some more information on that program. It'll uh, it'll put some money in your pocket. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Frank Santos, our Director of Training, who's going to answer your questions. Sounds good. Uh, Randy, I've uh, got a few questions here. Doing a remodel of a 70-volt system. Uh, would need to control audio in eight rooms. Would you suggest using existing wire? Is there a solution to run across CAT6 with individual room volume control? I can answer that last question. Uh, we do have a, an amp. It's a six-zone amp within our Pulse Audio line uh, where you can actually run CAT6 to each room in our volume controls or POE, uh, connect CAT6, and you're done uh, to the amp. So I can, uh, I can answer the last part of that question. Uh, the first part of that question, Randy, uh, would you suggest using existing wire? Uh, it depends on what the existing wire is. So let me go back. There we go. So call me. Call Frank. Send me an email. Give, me, give us the specifications. Uh, between myself, I will get to the uh, systems guys at ADI if you don't have a direct contact there. Um, We'll we'll lay it out for you. We'll put the we'll put the project together and make sure you're successful at it. Uh, so grab your phone, hit our QR codes. I'll leave those up here. Um, but we need more information. But absolutely, we can figure out how to make that happen. Go on, Frank. Yeah, yeah. That question from from Alan Barlow. So Alan, yeah, uh, please reach out to us. Another question from Mike Richard: uh, Do your Bluetooth transmitters have an AC power option? Uh, that's actually a good question, Randy. Uh, I was thinking about that uh, as well. Do you know? Absolutely, they do. So they're you. The, the power plug is USB. So all you got to do is take a USB with a USB wall wart, and you got AC power. You know, you can. Got it. Most, most receivers these days have an active USB port on them. You can we actually give you the cable in the box. You can just plug it in the USB port on the on a receiver or amplifier, um, but or you can just have a USB wall work to it, and yeah, you got AC power. Perfect. Another question from John Walls. Uh, I can answer this one. Is there any additional training from you or the vendors? Uh, absolutely, John. 
Uh, if you want to reach out to me again, my name is Frank Santos. I'm on the right hand side of the, uh, the slide there. If you want to scan my QR code, you can reach out to me. We can uh, do one on one training with you. Uh, we are also uh, releasing uh, an e learning uh, platform next week from Banco that will give you access to all sorts of learning resources specifically for Beale Street Audio. Uh, it has all our content, our videos, PowerPoints, but more importantly, a, a brief e learning module which will take you through uh, the Sonic Vortex technology and what Randy just covered. So, again, please reach out to me. Uh, another question from Richard Camacho Jr. Uh, two questions. Uh, number one, are amps repaired or replaced? Uh, I can answer that one. They are not. They are, I'm sorry, they are not repaired. They are replaced. So if you do have an issue with one of our amplifiers, we do not repair them. We simply give you a replacement under warranty. Uh, warranty terms for Beale Street Audio, two years for the amplifiers, limited lifetime on the speakers. Uh, so again, same question for the speakers. Question number two, we replace them. We do not repair them. Uh, looks like uh, one last question. Frank. Go ahead. Just so you guys know, the speaker warranty is lifetime. The amplifier warranty is two years. Yep. yep. And if you're using our evolution nope. extenders, that's 10 years, right? You got it. I think evolution uh, with our HDMI active distribution line, if it says evolution on it, it's a 10 year warranty, which is a pretty gross warranty. Our cables, it uh, doesn't matter if it's an audio cable or an HDMI cable or even a lightning cable for Apple iPhones that we sell, lifetime warranty. Nice. Last question here from Jeffrey. Any type of mounting bracket for ceiling speakers and existing sheetrock? I'm just concerned of the sheetrock falling or failing around the, the dog ears because the six and a half and eight inch ceiling speakers are so beefy and heavy. I have seen and touched your speakers and I'm looking forward to using them. They're beasts. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I got that. I'll get that one. The yep. answer is nope, and you don't need them. Trust us. As long as that drywall isn't crap, as long as it's normal good drywall, you won't need them. If you want to put a tile, I don't know if you can squeeze the tile bridge up there and use the tile bridge for uh, additional bracing. I guess you could. You probably have to bend it tuck it up into the opening and then pull it back down. You could do that. Um, but again, we have thousands and thousands of these speakers in the field all over the world. Um, and we've never had an instance of drywall cracking. Now, of course, you're going to go and do an install and damn thing's going to crack and I'll tell like an idiot. No, the answer is don't worry about it. Uh, we design these speakers uh, to work in standard drywall. Uh, and you won't have you won't have an issue. We actually even recently changed our dogs so that the original dog design would not work with double layer drywall. Oddly enough, uh, since we've acquired the the brand, uh, we've done a modification of the design, and we can actually work in single layer or dual layer drywall now. But don't sweat it; they're heavy, but they're not that heavy. I can add to that, Randy, uh, really quick. Uh, I've got two of our eight inch subwoofers which are heaviest speakers i've got them um, um installed into the ceiling with just sheet rock in my basement my basement is unfinished but i have one portion of it where i'm running a 7.2 system in addition to the speakers i've got subwoofers uh, mounted right in the ceilings i've had them for about a year year and a half and there's no cracking and they're holding uh, just sheet rock just fine no bracket at all so to answer that question all right well, we're right at one o'clock. If anyone's got a last question, feel free to type it in, or we're going to wrap this guy up. But I do believe, Mr. Manchin, are you still there? Because I do believe this has been recorded, and you guys can access it from the ADI website. Yes, I'm here. Yes, that's true. John Waltz, I'll answer your question a little bit further, which was, is there any additional training from you or the vendors? Each day's webinars have been captured. They're being archived off of the ADI homepage, which is adiglobaldistribution.us or .ca for Canada backslash webinars. And we'll also help you to sign up for the upcoming webinars. Uh, additional to that, ADI is releasing a customer LMS learning management system within the next 30 days look for uh, announcements on that. 
some of the trainings will be very product specific and some of the trainings will help onboard new employees into the business, i.e. what you need to know about AV, what you need to know about intrusion, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in addition to what our supplier partners are doing, ADI is stepping up and trying to help uh, grow our customers into additional opportunities. With that, I would like to thank Randy, Frank, Daniel, and hey, Mike. Sean. Go ahead. Sorry. One more commercial, Mike. I got one more commercial. Last week, guys, Frank and Daniel posted uh, a webinar on Evo IP, our HDMI over IP system. Uh, if you haven't done HDMI over IP and you're doing HDMI, you need to learn about this technology. I encourage you to go to the ADI site, find that archived webinar from Frank and Daniel, and spend an hour listening to it and watching it. I promise you, it'll help you grow your business. Now I'm finally done talking, Mike. Do tell. So with that, thank you all for attending. I wish things were different. I do hope that I do hope that we stay safe and healthy during this time. Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee are leading the way. Time is going to tell if it's too soon or if it's too late. Um, we want to do everything we can to help you grow and maintain your position in this business. We'll be back to, again tomorrow with another webinar. Thank you for attending. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.